Hello everybody, I'm Gemini Rivone from CNR Italy. As a co-chair of the IEEE GRS image analysis and data fusion technical committee, I had the pleasure to introduce you our first online school. This is focused on computer vision for earth observation, applying computer vision methodologies to address challenges in climate sensing. This school contains a series of lectures on the existing approaches exploited for analyzing satellite images together with the relative challenges. Each lesson will be followed by a two hour practical session where the participant will implement the techniques discussed in the lecture, exploiting some widely used programming languages as Python, for example, and the open source of software tools to address the exercise provided by our expert professors. You can see in this slide our logo that you should know very well because they is you know, on our main web page. And this is our main picture. Um, you can find here some numbers related to our school. In particular, we will have nine different lessons on nine different topics. And uh, uh, this lesson will be divided, as I already mentioned, in a theoretical part and a practical part where the, the theoretical concept will be uh, applied and the participants can put their hands on the problem. Everything is possible thanks to the presence of 17 and most professors that will help you during this school. This is the organizing committee. I'd like to thank Ronnie, the chair of our technical committee, and Claudio, the other co-chair. Moreover, I'd like to thank all these other guys that helped us, and they are part of our technical committee, belonging to the world, our working groups, Dalton groups, and so on. Thank you so much for your support and for helping us in organizing, in organizing this event. This is our speaker professor that will help us. You can see their picture and their names, and it's simple to see that they come from over all, all from all, all over the world. Uh, we have professors from universities and researchers from research centers and companies like Microsoft. I'd like to thank all of them. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to organize this event without their support. I think you know some of them, but anyway, we will introduce them uh, before each lesson. This is the technical program that you can find on our uh, uh, web page. We will start today with the lessons about a mixing related by Dr. Rossi. In the afternoon, we will see the problem of change detection with uh, Dr. Robinson from Microsoft. Tomorrow, we will talk about learning need of your labels with the, the contribution of professors from the University of Cambridge and the Technical University of Munich and researchers from German Aerospace Center. In the afternoon, the, uh, the problem was uh, the SAR uh, processing uh, involving computer vision will be addressed by Dr. Kumar. Uh, on Wednesday, Professor Lobby from the University of Paris will talk about semantic sedimentation and the problem of big your data will be addressed by Professor Prasa and Professor Crawford from the University of Houston and the Broad University in the afternoon. On October 6, we will talk about image fusion with a special focus on uh, image sharpening, together with the Professor Scarpa and the Dr. Ciotola from the University of Naples. In the afternoon, uh, the XAI for Earth Science will be discussed together with Dr. Ronco from the University of Valencia. Finally, on Friday, we will see a lesson about pulsar and application of computer vision methodology to this research field, together with the Professor Battacharia and Professor Freire, with the support of Dr. Manda. Let's go ahead with the uh, first lesson. This is led by Dr. Benut Rassi. Just a few words about Dr. Rassi. Dr. Rass is a principal research associate with the Elbrunt Zendrum and Rosendorf, Germany. He won the doctoral grant of the University of Iceland Research Fund, the Emskill University Fund, and the Alexander von Albold Research Fellowship Grant in 2015 and 2019. 
These services in, in associated is offered the IEEE geoscience and remote sensing letters. And this is an IEEE senior, senior member. His research interests include signal image processing, machine deep learning, remote sensing, and artificial intelligence. This lesson is another deep machine learning for spectral mixing. And in this lesson, we'll be uh, discussing the concept about linear at the spectral mixing, including uh, geometrical approaches, blind linear mixing, and the sparse mixing. The course will be further uh, discuss how the encoders and convolutional neural network for a mixing. The hands on part aims to train participants to use the advanced open source machine and deep learning based spectral mixing techniques and fine tune the models. So I think that's all from my side. So uh, let's interrupt the presentation. Dr. Rassi, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Jimin. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So I don't have to introduce myself anymore. So I go directly to slides and share my screen. So I guess everyone is able to see my screen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go. So somehow I need to. So you you can ask a question uh, during the, the tutorial and the lecture. So do not hesitate. And um, uh, so we try. I try to have a kind of. Uh, interaction uh, between and kind of interactive uh, session. Uh, I need to kind of keep uh, an eye on chat. Uh, I don't know, Jimon, just a quick question. Uh, can they open their mic and uh, ask directly the questions or they have to write in chat? As you want. Okay, so yeah. It's up you to you. Yeah, you can also open your mic and ask your question if you want, if you prepare. So, um, let's see what we're going to uh, what we are going to learn in this course. So, we're going to learn what is a mixing, and why do we need a mixing? Um, what is linear mixing, and when we can use linear mixing? Um, uh, we learn about. Uh, um, pure pixels and uh, uh, end member extraction techniques and the no pure pixel scenarios. Um, uh, then we we also learn, uh, uh, I briefly talk about the spectral uh, variability and uh, uh, you will, um, I will talk about the difference between uh, uh, supervisor mixing, semi supervisor mixing, uh, which also called the uh, sparse mixing, and the line of mixing. So, yeah, and then uh, um, I talk about uh, geometrical mixing, also um, how to use auto encoders in CNN for linear mixing. And finally, uh, we we're going to have hopefully um, around uh, more or less two hour uh, session for hands on and exercises um, that uh, we, we released the, the Python based collection of mixing approaches for you um, on um, my GitHub page that uh, we're going uh, to discuss and learn how to. Uh, use these techniques uh, for different data sets and uh, um, fine tune the models and uh, hopefully you uh, get kind of a foundation to uh, develop your own uh, uh, methodology and technique uh, a mixing technique later on so for those um who don't know about hyperspectral images? Um, uh, hyperspectral cameras, cameras uh, uh, 
provide a continued the contiguous uh, electromagnetic spectra. Um, so, um, in addition to the spatial dimension, you also have a spectral dimension. So each pixel has a spectral uh, signature, uh, which is very important. And this is spectral signature allowing uh, allow, uh, uh, allows to distinguish between the different uh, material. So, um, for um, in in uh, uh, my, um, we have two different scenarios: macroscopic scenarios and microscopic scenarios. In macroscopic uh, microscopic scenarios, uh, like remote sensing scenarios, the pixel can be a mixture of uh, um, different uh, uh, materials, and that's because of the mainly because of the lower spatial resolution that it has. Uh, the camera and for uh, microscopic scenarios uh, usually because of the intimate mixture of the uh, uh, materials uh, 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 every uh, can be a mixture of different uh, materials and a um, mixing is uh, estimating the fractional abundances for pure uh, spectra of uh, these materials which we call uh, n member within the pixel. So that's basically what is unmixing. And um, uh, this is very important to understand this concept. Just, uh, I put this in slide because I saw uh, some uh, young researchers, they confuse the concepts between unmixing and the clustering or unsupervised uh, classification or segmentation. Um, so in unmixing, we have a mixing model and um, eventually you can associate your abundances with N members and uh, you can distinguish uh, different uh, uh, materials. But for clustering or for unsupervised, you only get, you, uh, if you use soft labeling, um, you only get uh, kind of abundances. So you might uh, kind of develop a technique you get similar uh, maps as uh, abundances, but uh, you cannot call it unmixing. So I only wanted to discuss this because uh, um, I saw a couple of researches in, uh, related to this, which uh, uh, was uh, kind of uh, confusing the concepts. So any questions so far? So there's nothing in the chat. So I just continue until you stop me. So try to uh, ask your questions. So uh, here's the difference between linear and mixing, which is the uh, uh, main topic, uh, main, uh, our topic today, and uh, nonlinear and mixing. So in linear and mixing, the light basically interact with um, uh, with material once and get uh, 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 so what you see is, uh, and then goes to the sensor, uh, and and therefore you can have, uh, um, you can uh, uh, have a linear model. So each of your uh, pixels or observations, you can linearly, uh, it's a linear combination of the n members, which is basically these, these uh, you can assume these red uh, circles. Uh, so it's a linear combination of these um, red circles. But for, for nonlinear mixing, uh, uh, the light interacts uh, with several materials uh, before reaching the sensor. And therefore, uh, you, you cannot linearly, uh, uh, the, the, the pixel is not linear combination of the members anymore. So you need a, a nonlinear function to, to model your observations. So here is in our case uh, for, for remote sensing or Earth observation. Uh, so the light uh, passes through atmosphere and reach the target. Basically, this is a one pixel, let's say, assume that it's 10 meter by 10 meter pixel. And there are three materials inside this pixel. Um, river, uh, which is water, and soil, and then uh, tree. And then uh, 
basically uh, you you need to apply a kind of uh, atmospheric correction to get rid of the atmospheric effect uh, to get the reflectance. So these reflectance uh, that you have, if it is a little bit uh, uh, too long, you should be the same length as the other. But uh, the main concept is that the, the reflectance that you have first of all is non negative, and then it is. Um, and so the summation of different percentage of uh, uh, the the minerals that are uh, having here. So, for instance, in this case, it's twenty percent water, fifty percent soil, and uh, thirty percent grass. And the summation of these uh, French fractions obviously is equal to one. It's just the concept here, and that is what we call uh, I want to sum to one constraint. And and each of these uh, basically portions cannot be negative, and that's obvious. And therefore, uh, we hold uh, abundance non-negativity constraints when you want to solve this linear problem. So, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, then I move on. Um, so now let's assume that uh, we have so many of these pixels, and this is a projection of those pixels, and we have three materials, and this is the end member of the R materials. Uh, so each of these pixels you can um, uh, model using this uh, formula here, which E is basically a matrix which contains the end members vector. And uh, A is the abundances. And as we already discussed, the summation of the uh, abundances is equal to one, abundance of the one constraint, and each of them should be uh, greater or equal to zero. And that's the non negativity constraint. So if you reform, um, uh, formulate this and put it in a matrix to contain all the, uh, to include all these pixels, then you're going to have. Uh, uh, um, a notation like this, that Y is uh, P times N, and uh, it's your observed pixels, contains all the pixels this time, uh, this matrix, and then uh, N member is, uh, so that we have a question, just a minute. Uh, N member uh, matrix is E, P times R, abundances are the R times N, and then N is noise. So we have one question here. Yeah, this is basically what we are we are going to discuss, and we are we are uh, uh, this is basically the problem of mixing that we are discussing now. So we are we are uh, going to determine the abundances and the associate n members. Okay. So please hold this question, and uh, as we move on, most probably you will uh, learn uh, and get your answer. Otherwise, just ask it. Uh, okay. So now I put a, a kind of quiz here to have a little bit of interaction with uh, all of the participants here. So uh, assume that you have. Um, Pure pixel uh, one, two, and three, or n member one, n member two, and n member three. And then, uh, if you can answer, uh, for instance, uh, which uh, which pixel is four and which pixel is uh, five, you can answer in the chat. So to yeah, there's another question uh, about the N members are known, and uh, uh, also we're going to answer this question as, as well. Uh, there are different types of mixings, and when we go through the lecture, you will, answer, uh, you will get your answer. So now we can write it in the chat.
So they're saying uh, uh, pixel four uh, is Y three. So it, it's correct. So as you see, this is almost fifty percent of these two materials are involved uh, uh, in this uh, pixel, and pixel five. Okay. Um, nobody is answering pixel. Yeah, pixel five is uh, Y three as well. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. P pixel six. Wait one. Okay. So. It seems that everybody is getting the concept, and uh, this was important for me. Uh, getting the concept uh, correctly, and yeah. Yeah, correct. And Y4 basically is uh, 9 and 10. <laughs> Yeah, it seems that everybody is following into that's good. So as you see, uh, pixel Y4 basically shares the same uh, portion from all three N members and both nine and 10 could be pixel Y4. So uh, yeah, now we know that uh, these uh, concepts, uh, let's move on. So <laughs> let's talk about uh, briefly talk about the spectral variability. Um, um, it's a more important concept, and you need to know about it. Um, so uh, when you're dealing with the hyperspectral data, you will see that uh, you you're gonna have um, a variation, for instance, for these uh, part, which is maybe roof, and you will see the variation in your spectra, and also you see similar thing for for these, for instance, trees in this area. You you will see variation in your uh, uh, measured spectra. So uh, these are the three main reasons of the uh, behind this uh, variation. At most break effect that we already discussed about it, it could be from the uh, top of the atmosphere or bottom of the atmosphere as well, uh, which we, I didn't show in the previous uh, uh, cartoon. Uh, and uh, yeah, it could be uh, because of illumination variation. Illumination variation mainly is because uh, terrain topography and uh, regulation of the light. Uh, for instance, for, for, for this area, you get uh, shadow and the intrinsic, uh, intrinsic uh, variation of the uh, materials, uh, which, uh, for instance, uh, you might deal with uh, uh, different type of leaves, like uh, fresh leaves or uh, in your tree uh, or um, in the tree uh, or uh, uh, a dry uh, leaves, for instance. So this is a very important topic. Uh, I would suggest you uh, to go and read about it. Uh, these are two uh, good references that the uh, spectral variety in high spectral data mixing comprehensive uh, review and spectral variety of remotely sensed target uh, materials. These are uh, two references that uh, if you want to know more about this concept and how to deal with it, uh, uh, I suggest you to uh, read these two references. So now let's talk about pure pixels and uh, I know pure pixel scenario. 
So when when you uh, uh, when there is uh, at least uh, one pure pixel for each material, uh, then uh, basically you can select those as M members and you can continue and work with it. And here you see, for instance, this uh, in this case, uh, these are projections of your data points um, um, in two D space. So you have M members. Uh, uh, you have a pure pixel for each M members that you can pick or extract, and then you can work with it. And then, uh, but in real uh, world scenarios, often uh, uh, you you cannot find pure pixel for uh, some of the materials. Therefore, uh, as you see here, for instance. Uh, the, the place for the end members is empty and you need to uh, uh, develop some technique to estimate these end members uh, so these are two different scenarios that you have um, um, at least in, in the right side uh, right uh, figure you, you can see that at least you have two uh, pixels uh, on the uh, face of the simplex of your data set uh, and then the left uh, uh, figure it's a scenario that you have only one pixel and face it of the simplex of the data set so which is much harder to estimate the uh, n members in this case compared to the um, the case on the right And by the way, uh, make sure that you get the um, final version of the PDF that I, I uploaded in the morning. Um, <clears throat> I corrected some typos and some mistakes. So uh, now let's say that we have pure pixel for each materials and often you use these chain rules if there is pure pixel in your uh, data set uh, a pure pixel for each material then you uh, you can uh, first you apply your data set and subspace and then you can apply n member extraction techniques to extract the n members and then when you have the n members uh, you can uh, apply uh, abundance estimation and estimate your abundances and that's often it's a uh, it's the main chain process, uh, particularly in the case uh, for mixing, particularly for for a pure pixel scenario. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about the geometrical based uh, on mixing approaches. Uh, in general, uh, now we can divide them in two different uh, categories. Uh, the one that is based on pure pixel scenarios and the one that is based on no pure pixel scenarios. So the one that is based on pure pixel scenarios can be divided into two groups, uh, simplex fitting, uh, six the base city is the base technique, six the larger simplex volume, uh, formed by the uh, pure uh, pixels and and uh, finder and uh, simple uh, simplex volume maximization or uh, uh, can be categorized in this group and then uh, uh, projection based techniques and then the, the projection actually and then uh, extreme selections uh, so Basically, you uh, you iteratively in, in these type of techniques, you iteratively project your data set and try to select the extreme point uh, um, which you uh, believe that it uh, it will be correspond to the end members. And the uh, pixel purity index is one of these uh, uh, techniques, and uh, so the way that uh, you uh, so the way the way that it works is to project the data in the kind of uh, random vectors, and then uh, score the extremes uh, each time, and then basically select the numbers based on the scores. 
and then the vertex component analysis is also um, um, uh, an important uh, 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 it's actually widely used uh, techniques for MR extraction so um, so basically you uh, yeah, you project the data in the direction that is uh, orthogonal to the subspace spanned by um, your the M member uh, which already uh, determined, and the the basically the the extremes of your projections uh, you select them as each time as M member. So. And then we have uh, no pure pixel scenario that uh, base uh, basic uh, they they they're mostly based on uh, uh, minimum volume uh, minimum uh, minimization the volume of the simplex so they they formed a mixing problem to uh, to minimize the uh, volume of the simplex so uh, minimum volume simplex uh, minimum volume simplex analysis. And also simplex identification by splitting uh, by variable splitting among the like Lagrangian. Uh, it's uh, uh, they can be so when these the uh, category and they are actually solve the same problem, uh, but uh, um, maybe Cicel is more efficient because uh, of the the way that it solves the problem. It's the the solution. So we have one question here. Yeah, this is uh, um, this is a good question. Yeah, this is a good question. That basically. Um, Sorry, Ben. Can, can you re can you read the um, the question in the chat? Because I don't know if uh, uh, on the ah, okay. live streaming they can see the yeah, that's the true. Thing, so. yeah, that's Thank true. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, um, how can one know if uh, one has pure pixel or not, and I, how to uh, uh, empirically know which approach to take, pure pixel versus no pure pixel. So in intimate uh, mixture scenarios, you often uh, uh, know uh, that uh, basically it's very hard to have these uh, pure pixels. So you, but but for for uh, uh, for, for remote sensing application or earth observation application, uh, this is often the case. So often in real uh, war scenario, you don't have uh, um, often for for at least for one metal year, you don't have pure pixel. So you usually want to go. So in in general, in previously uh, uh, talking, uh, generally uh, it's better to go with uh, assumption that you don't have these pure, uh, pure pixels. Um, yeah, this is uh, also related to another. Uh, topic which is uh, uh, extracting the number of M members, which we don't discuss is a big topic we don't discuss today. And uh, uh, that's also a hard uh, problem that how to determine the number of the M members basically. But unfortunately, we don't have time to go all over these concepts. So, So now let's um, categorize the uh, the methods that we discussed today in terms of uh, per knowledge of N members. Uh, this is the answer to one of the earliest uh, questions. So uh, we have supervised unmixing, which basically in this scenario, basically we assume the N members are known. And then, um, 
uh, we have blind unmixing, uh, which we need to simultaneously estimate both end members and abundances. And then uh, we have semi supervised unmixing and also called sparse unmixing, which has kind of which we have kind of prior knowledge of the materials uh, in advance and uh, um, or it means that we, we have uh, a, a dictionary of the end members available for uh, the type of material we are dealing in the same. So this is a reminder of the definition of the norm is a function which maps vector space to the non-negative real uh, numbers, but most probably most of you are familiar with these concepts and uh, L1 norm, which is the uh, summation of the absolute uh, values in your, in your vector, and then L2 norm and then uh, LP norm. And it's just a reminder because you need to know about this concept and uh, later on we use this. And also a uh, previous norm, which is like uh, uh, L2 norm, we use it a lot in the next slide. So, um, now let's talk about supervised uh, unmixing. So, we assume that uh, end members are known, so we can. Uh, we can extract them using uh, extract end member extraction techniques, you know, like geometrical, some geometrical approaches, or you, you select in the library, or you have measurements uh, from your lab. So basically, in your model, you assume the end members are known. And therefore, you can uh, form an optimization problem with respect to abundances. And then you have a fidelity term uh, uh, plus maybe a penalty term a penalty term uh, applied to the uh, abundances and then you hold the sum to one constraint and also non negative constraint that we already discussed so uh, this is a general uh, form that we have for uh, basically optimization based supervisor mixing Okay, um, fully current release with Kura mixing is uh, 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 widely used technique uh, to estimate the abundances. So basically, it's this uh, optimization problem that is used always with respect to A. Uh, um, so there is no penalty, but you can apply a special liberalization uh, to the function of phi. It could be um uh, tv or uh, sparsity per multiplicity or a combination of them and yeah so you can apply kind of a, a regular reserve on a as well but this is uh, called uh, fclsu and there are other versions as well uh, unconstrained or um, um, yeah the, the other version of uh, this problem, but this is the most widely used one, and it's uh, proposed in this paper. So also, uh, we proposed uh, a method called UNDIP, high perspective imaging using deep image prior. So what we suggest, uh, because there is a um, 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 kind of discussion that uh, what type of uh, regularizer would be uh, useful for this problem. So we suggested to turn this problem to um, uh, an optimization uh, with respect to the parameters of the deep network. This uh, theta here is our uh, uh, basically deep network, and this is coming from the uh, concept uh, method called deep image prior. Uh, so what we do, we first um, uh, estimate the end members using uh, simulatory maximization, and then a memory server fix uh, throughout uh, the training of the network. So after to basically it's the network, and the input of the network is uh, noise, and networks uh, network uh, iteratively basically tries to 
try uh, to minimize uh, uh, this uh, term or this loss function. And uh, finally, we get the optimal. So this is one of the two things we later uh, we we do some experiments with it. So let's move on to uh, blind on mixing. Um, we we as as you already discussed. So in blind on mixing, we assume that both N members in abundances are unknown. So we need to simultaneously estimate N member and abundances, and we can form uh, an optimization. Uh, write an optimization problem in this form, and uh, which the first name is the fidelity term, and um, then you can apply a penalty term on the n members, and uh, a penalty, another penalty term may be on abundances, and then you hold the sum to one constraint and non negative constraint, and also uh, maybe a members uh, constraint on the n members. So that you solve this problem uh, with respect to both E and A, and that's just a um, general form for blind and mixing. So before introducing some methods for blind and mixing, um, let's discuss the um, and no uh, few picture scenarios and. Uh, uh, minimum volume uh, volume uh, penalties. So this is two um, uh, widely used minimum volume penalty that we will uh, later discuss as well. And uh, so basically, you can use this type of uh, penalty in the in your uh, free one function here as your free one, free one uh, function. And uh, so the left one is called center. So it tries. So what what it is? How how it works? It tries to um, basically uh, pull all your air members from the initial simplex, which is the red one, um, towards the center of the data set until you get get to the actual simplex or true simplex, which is the blue one. That's how it is. Uh, uh, penalty works and basically is a quadratic uh, penalty which promotes uh, uh, minimum volume constraint for, for your uh, problem. And M here basically is the uh, center, center of the, the, your data points. And uh, so the right one is um, it's a total variation penalty that you can also use, and uh, the way it works, um, uh, it pulls the n members. Uh, uh, let's assume that you are starting from the initial simple x, which is the red one, and it pulls the n members towards each other until it uh, reaches to the actual simple x. So this is also a quadratic uh, form, uh, quadratic penalty, which promotes. Uh, minimal volume. Yeah, there is a question. Um, is the location of the features in the image important? Uh, image is important, and how? You can encode them in the model. I don't understand this question. Uh, what do you mean by features in the, the location of the features? And important for what? And how you encode them? Uh, yeah. The, Maybe you can open your uh, mic uh, if you want to explain what you mean uh, and how you can encode them in the model. Uh, um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. 
I mean the fish like trees, water, uh, in your model, so... Uh, yeah, you mean the special, the special... Uh, yeah, the special, so yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So we, we get to this point, so um, um, it depends, it depends. Some of the techniques, actually, it's only pixel-wise and the special, uh, they don't incorporate the special information, and some of the techniques, uh, they use the special information and it turns out that actually uh, capturing the spatial information is important. And that's why actually you apply a kind of regularizer on, uh, on, on abundances to capture this spatial information. Okay, thank you. So, um, let's see how far we are into the... So let's uh, let's uh, discuss about uh, the first blind uh, unmixing method, which is called minimum volume constraint non-negative matrix factorization, and we see NMF. So, so basically, the what they use. Uh, 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 they apply uh, so they they use the square of the volume of the simplex defined by this v here. Uh, simplex were actually defined by the embedded matrix, and uh, so basically this v is uh, uh, it gives you the uh, volume of the simplex, uh, which. Uh, 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 defined by the columns of the E, which is your uh, N members. So there is, uh, so the, the, it, it solved this problem basically, uh, or they, they propose this problem. Um, you can find this technique here in this paper. And uh, I saw a Python implementation for um, this uh, technique, but I did not try it myself. So what I you, you have the link if you want to try it. I don't think this is by the other um, themselves. And then we have another method called the uh, collaborative non-negative matrix factorization for remotely sent high, uh, sense high perspective mixing. Um, so uh, they they as I already explained, they use this. Uh, um, quadratic uh, minimum volume penalty um, and uh, for uh, apply to the end members and also they use uh, uh, sparsity promoting penalty on the abundances uh, so they solve this problem um, in this type of problems it's very uh, difficult to um, select the optimum value for regularization parameter. Just keep that in mind. So the next technique that we are going to discuss is um, NMF QMB. Uh, is there any question so far? Okay. You can also open your mic if you want. Okay, so we move on. Uh, Non-negative matrix factorization, quadratic minimum volume. So what they did in this um, um, paper actually here, Regulation parameter selection and minimum volume hyperspectral mixing. They uh, they have two major contributions. Um, first, uh, they form um, uh, or they propose a general form for three different uh, 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 minimum quadratic minimum uh, volume penalties center and TV that we already discussed. And another one, which is also boundary. And this is the general form, as you see here. So B 
a matrix B and matrix O uh, can change depending on the type of the penalty that you want. And the, in the case of boundary that we didn't discuss basically is the, uh, they are trying to, um, you, you try to, the concept is that you try to minimize the distance between the end members and the boundary uh, pixels and, and the simplex of the data that uh, the way that you uh, decide these pixels, uh, which is uh, this O matrix here, you can use a kind of uh, geometrical approach to estimate the end members and assume that as the extremes of the uh, uh, your uh, basically uh, uh, on, the, on the boundary that uh, of, of your simplex, the data simplex. So this was one of the um, major contribution here. And then they also um, proposed um, uh, a kind of uh, uh, a kind of a parameter uh, selection technique for lambda, which is very important. And um, so basically the main idea here is that the lambda is op uh, optimum lambda is the one that uh, uh, minimize the boundary of the uh, estimated M members, and then the the uh, and the, the boundary of the basically the data points that you are having. So G here uh, basically uh, is the set of the vertices of the complex level. Uh, a convex hall of the observation projected into a subspace. So what they're trying to do basically to minimize this uh, distance. And that's how uh, they select the parameter lambda. Yeah, they, um, you can also um, Estimate the end members uh, and the abundances and reformulate your problem in a subspace. And the easiest way is to uh, basically use um, orthogonal or semi orthogonal um, uh, matrix like we, which we transpose with uh, identity and obtain, you can uh, get it uh, by applying SVD or P PCA on your data set. And uh, so you can show that uh, these two problems are same problems, um, but the uh, advantage of uh, using and uh, solving the problem in a subspace, it is uh, way more efficient and it's more robust and noise as well. But there is a disadvantage uh, when you, you solve your problem uh, in, a, in a subspace. Uh, that you may end up with a negative value for your N members, um, particularly in a, uh, when a noisy scenario or uh, when there is a lot of nonlinearity involved in your data. So, then um, the next activity is tropic descent uh, archetypal, uh, archetypal analysis for blind hyperspace arm mixing, which actually is uh, um, by, by Alex, who is here and is going to um, help me with, uh, with a hands-on uh, session. So in this work, uh, we or this method, uh, uh, we uh, so this is basically the main uh, arm mixing problem. Um, and we know that uh, uh, the, the columns of A belongs to uh, the simplex. Uh, let's call it uh, delta R. Delta R, uh, the simplex that we already discussed uh, about it. And therefore, we can rewrite this problem, the, the blind and missing problem, uh, in a way that uh, we have the negativity, uh, sorry, we, we have the fidelity term subjected to 
the, the constraint that uh, uh, our uh, abundances belongs to uh, the simplex and also uh, we have the uh, our constraint on n members so you can use like a typical uh, analysis formulation uh, to enforce the members to be uh, n members to be linear combination of your pixels so as you see here uh, instead of n members we put y times p which uh, uh, basically uh, the columns of p belongs to uh, the simplex of, uh, in n and uh, uh, we use uh, an entropic descent algorithm to solve this problem and uh, uh, this problem can be uh, solved uh, pixel wise and therefore is very uh, efficient so and therefore it uh, um, help us to um, also search for a model selection technique we realize that the initialization of p is uh, the, the the solution is very sensitive to initialization of, of p matrix p and therefore we propose a selection technique where um uh, the covariance move, which is a maximum uh, of the you know, product uh, of the n members, and then uh, L, L1 uh, residual or uh, um, L1 uh, residual of the basic uh, between the observed data and the, um, our estimated uh, matrices are minimized. So that's uh, that's how we select the uh, best model. Um, for uh, for this problem, so maybe uh, before moving to um, autoencoders, um, and well, I'm I'm using the auto autoencoder. Maybe uh, we can have a ten minutes break. Now it's uh, eleven. Uh, and hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can come back and finish the uh, the lectures and uh, continue with the uh, hands on session. Uh, before going to a break, is there any question so far? Okay, so it seems that uh, there's no question. It seems so. Okay, uh, so I would suggest uh, having a 10 minutes break. Uh, yeah. uh, and then, then we can come back and, uh, in case if you still have question from uh, this part of the lecture, uh, you can ask your question or write it in the chat. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Just for, for the guys, is please, my advice is don't be shy. You have this opportunity, uh, the Professor Rassi here with you. So if you have any question, please write them in the chat or try to unmute yourself and to, uh, to ask questions. So it's an opportunity for you to clarify some points in this moment. So don't be shy. Okay, see you in 10 minutes.
Okay. Um, if everyone is back, I can start again. So, I hope everyone is back from the break. Okay. At least one person is back. So, I will continue with line of mixing. And then we go to sparse some mixing and then um, we close the, um, uh, basically the first part of the lectures, uh, and then we move on to the hands-on session, uh, hopefully after break. So once again, I would like to ask if anybody has question about the concept of the mixing, about the methods that I explained, about um, different concepts, like with pure pixel, uh, what we can do in, in the no pure pixel scenario. So at least so far, you know, uh, this concept, or at least I assume that you know, and um, you also learn about supervised uh, unmixing, which the end members uh, are known. And we already started with uh, blind unmixing, but now we move on to blind unmixing using autoencoders. And if you have uh, any question, do not hesitate. It's it twice. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the, the, uh, so I assume that you're familiar with the concept of autoencoders. And um, uh, for a mixing, the encoder uh, encodes uh, the input into abundances. And then the decoder basically reconstruct the signal. So if uh, so, you apply your uh, non-negativity constraint and your uh, something one constraint on your um, most of the time uh, last layer uh, of your encoder. And then um, the, the weights of the decoder. Decoder is always a shadow shallow decoder. And the weights of the decoders are uh, the end members. And uh, then you have a loss function, which is basically uh, reconstructed uh, reconstruction loss. And um, then maybe you have, you can have a kind of um, uh, uh, regular reserve which depend, can be depend on the abundances or the weights of the decoder. You want to maybe apply L2 norm on the weight of the decoder or the encoder or the weights of the encoder, which uh, weights of the decoder, which is the abundance, again, members. So, there is, there is one, uh, question here How are the end members? Fedra, I think, uh, Fedra is asking, How are the end members related to spectral firms? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand this completely. Um, what do you mean by spectral firm? So the end members basically. Uh, are you, are you talking about the particular autoencoders or this is a general question? Well, it's a general question. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. So what do you mean by spectral firms? 
Well, I understand that each of the classes that you have in a in an image like vegetation or soil, uh, you have an spectral film for each uh, that is characteristic for each of these classes. So you get the the um, the frequencies or well the um uh, the uh, the bands that are um, related to each of these classes is a different firm that you have from for soil and the other one for vegetation. So for example, if you're looking for vegetation, I know that uh, some of the red and near bands are different in, in the case of vegetation, but in the case of soil, maybe the relation between the near and the red bands are are completely different, and somehow I can get uh, this index. Basically, basically, I think I understood your question. Basically, mm -hmm. the n members is is um, is a reflectance. Mm -hmm. So it, it, actually, it is a reflectance. So it includes all these uh, uh, wavelengths that you're uh, wavelength sense that you're talking about. So is okay. that a question or? Yes, that, that's the question. So uh, in the case of the N members that you mentioned is that you have it is um, a spectral um, signature for each of these uh, elements Remember. like soil, yes. water yes. and vegetation. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Is that your question or you're, you're asking how you realize that these N member related to, for instance, vegetation? Uh, no, no, that was okay. my question. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there is another question uh, by uh, why how I guess uh, implied on mixing. So I read the question implied on mixing using auto encoders. Weights will be learned only for encoders. As you have mentioned, that weights of the encoders will be a value of uh, will be value of n members. Uh, weights of the decoder will be value of the n members. So, so basically, no. Um, uh, well, it depends. Actually, you can have uh, if I understood your question correctly, uh, you can fix the weights of the uh, uh, basically decoder, and then it turns to a supervised. Um, on mixing, but implying on mixing, you also learn the weights of the uh, uh, decoder. So in, in that case, uh, it is applying on mixing because of that. So you basically le learn the weights of the encoder and they learn uh, learn the, uh, the the weights of the decoder simultaneously. So that's why uh, it's it's blind on mixing using auto encoder. Did I answer your question? Why half? Uh, yes, Professor. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. So, any other question? Okay. Uh, Professor, can I ask one thing? Yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, it's like, like you have mentioned, like encoder, encoder, and input into abundance. And then the sigma is working with the weight of decoder with uh, with input. Will it be weight of decoder or weight of encoder? In the on the slide. So yeah, basically uh, it's your activation function that you are applying. Uh, the, the bias actually here is through we drop the bias, oh. so it's weight plus plus the bias, and then activation, and it's a general form that you're uh, using. And uh, you might have different layers, and at the, in the end, you get the abundances. This is maybe for very simplified version, okay? Uh, okay. And Thank you me. can have bias as well if you want. Understood. And uh, for uh, for the for the uh, basically uh, the the usually for the decoder, you don't uh, have uh, the. Uh, for, for the decoder, basically, you don't have the uh, bias, usually. Okay, thank is, you. Is that your question? Or... 
yeah actually uh, i had uh, like because i saw this one like wde so i think this is like weight of decoder rather than weight ah, of so, uh, oh yeah sorry 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 this is a typo sorry sorry okay oh, okay, okay. Is, is that what you're mentioning yes 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 yes, yes sorry 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 this is a typo i need to fix it yeah this is a typo you need to uh, so basically this applies to the encoder weight of the encoders okay is that what you were mentioning Yes, yes. Thanks, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this should be, I will fix this uh, later on and upload a new version. Okay. Any other question? Good. So we talked about uh, applying um, abundance sum to one constraint and abundance non negativity constraint, but let's see how we can apply that in case of uh, using autoencoder. So there are different ways. Uh, or you can apply in, uh, a non negative activation function like value and then apply a norm normalization. Uh, for uh, to to get one sum to one constraint to get actually both one sum to one constraint and uh, one non negativity constraint. So that's the first uh, way you do it, or you use absolute value for the uh, basically the coefficients of the abundances. Um, this is the uh, this is the second way that you can do, but um, the widely used one is to use a softmax layer or softmax function that uh, basically applies both uh, abundance of the one and non-negative constraint together. You can also uh, add a penalty term to the launch function, but uh, it, uh, it affects the uh, basically the uh, the convergence a little bit and the, uh, the efficiency of the method and also the stability of the uh, training process. Uh, so it is not usually recommended. So as uh, we already discussed, um we have a, uh, usually have a loss function in this form and uh, basically a reconstruction uh, term uh, is usually either l2 norm rmc or um spectral angle distance uh, which is given with uh, uh, this formula and uh, the, the the major problem with uh, spectral angle, angle distance is that uh, well there, there is actually advantages that it captures uh, because it's scaling variant it captures the spectral variability that we already discussed uh, but then again uh, uh, you might uh, because it's, uh, it compares the scale version of the, uh, your reconstructing pixel, uh, you will lose this scale information that uh, uh, sometimes actually is important. It's important for abundance estimation. So imagine that um, you have a similar um, uh, M members uh, with uh, different uh, scale in your uh, uh, your data then um, I think it's it's a little bit hard uh, that uh, to use this loss function to distinguish between those type of uh, materials so yeah it comes with the with pros and cons and then we have uh, you can apply a regularization term j it could be a minimum volume applied to n members or the weight of the decoder 
or even the rate of the in code. Okay, so let's talk about the first uh, algorithm proposed in this paper, and then it's called and the dispersal to encoder network for end memory extraction and high perspective unmixing. Um, <clears throat> so they use um, a kind of a mask nose layer. So this actually network is uh, very uh, customized. They have their own uh, customized uh, layer layers. Um, so they use a mask noise, which basically adding Gaussian noise, and then using it to a drop uh, out after that. And then they uh, they use only one layer, one hidden layer, but they use a, a different. It's, it's kind of a scale version of SAT that we already discussed, which is here. Uh, they use that instead of the inner product. So it's a kind of customized layer, customized layer. And then they use batch norm, batch normalization. Uh, so I hope that you are familiar with these concepts. So this is a batch normalization, general batch normalization. But uh, the, the thing is, uh, they add this bias term. At least in the paper, they suggest this bias term. But the real, the, the, the implementation that we use is actually from this paper. It's not by the other themselves. And in that implementation, we don't consider uh, this term and also this term, the penalty, they don't uh, use it, uh, this term, the penalty anymore. So, uh, yeah, also, uh, then uh, they use dropout. And for, for abundance non negativity and abundance sub to one, so we already discussed, they use uh, value and uh, basically L1 for abundance sub to one applied to um, uh, Z star, which is actually just contains N highest uh, activation, activation set. And then they use a linear layer to um, extract the N members. So the last function that they use, they have this uh, uh, reconstruction, then KL the emergence of one and the uh, C function and uh, L, L1 norm and Z and uh, some uh, L2 regularization on both decoders and encoders weight. So for, for, for this implementation, actually we work with this later on in, in, in the hands on uh, session. Uh, we don't use this term, um, and that's because it, it just performs better. So, yeah, and it's really hard to, um, uh, as you see, there's so many parameters, and it's really hard to set all these uh, hyperparameters. The next Technique is CNN autoencoder is a convolutional autoencoder for a mixing. So they use um, two hidden layers. Um, so convolutional uh, layer, batch normalization, they use liquid value for activation function, and then they use dropout. And then they repeat this, um, and then they apply itself max to for abundance sum to one and non-negativity constraint. Um, I think it's, uh, um, it's uh, they use self max with uh, uh, scaling uh, parameter, uh, which is also possible to use. And uh, then uh, they use a combinational layer and a linear layer to extract it. And they, for, for the last function, they use uh, SAP. So, and you can find this, you know, all the details about this network in. Uh, this paper, combinational encoder for a special spectrum, high perspective on this. So we also work with this method. And then we also propose a network called MCCNet, you know, sim simplex convolutional network for deep hyperspectral mixing. And um, so what we suggest in the last function, uh, we suggest to use uh, a minimum simplex. Uh, uh, term or minimum volume term for the simplex. And then we show that uh, this problem can be uh, transferred into 
um, a, a, a basically a problem uh, uh, of uh, this problem can be solved uh, by these type of networks uh, using this um, cost function with theta basically the first term is the, the construction and the theta is the uh, weight of the linear layer which is basically an uh, uh, encoder. So we use a, a kind of a, a CNN uh, with the skip connection and uh, we use um, four convolutional layer in the main uh, correction or stream and then uh, one convolutional layer with the skip connection. So all the details about the, this network and also for soft for abundance soft one and another TV use soft mice. So for for uh, basically uh, all the details for this is in this paper in simplex convolutional network for the fibers which are mixing and um, yeah we also uh, in each iteration of optimization we uh, project. Uh, uh, we, we hold the constraint on the end members as well. Mm -hmm. So we also work with this uh, method uh, later on and see the performance of some data set. Let's move on to um, let's move on to uh, metrics that we use for, uh, usually use in uh, our mixing for quantitative measurements. Uh, so RMC is uh, is the main one. RMC applied to the abundances, and we usually uh, record in percentage. And SAT that we already discussed, we usually do uh, for for the N members. We usually use SAT, and we usually uh, report it in degree. Um, so actually, this is the mean SAT. Is the mean um, for for the uh, number of the N, N members, um, but uh, still, this might not be. Uh, this is this is not actually a good uh, uh, um, criteria or metric to compute the, uh, the estimated N members correspond to the ground truth N members um, because um, so sometimes you see. Uh, some conflicts because you might get good results on SAT, but not good result on abundance RMSC. And the main reason is the scaling um, factor in your N members. So basically, when you're comparing SAT, uh, you're comparing the scale version of your N members, uh, which actually affects the abundances. So if you have a similar N member, with different uh, scale, you get totally different abundances, and uh, and that's some that's a that's a kind of uh, uh, concept that you need to keep in mind when you're working with uh, SAT. But this is common, very common, very common in, in the literature to use SAT to compare the the end members. And uh, signal to reconstruction error as well, which is uh, usually uh, for, for the abundances, and we usually use this for sparse mixing, and we also use it uh, in our hand run session and uh, um, for for the abundance estimated abundance. Okay, um, I, here are some results. I try to go quickly over uh, some results. You can see the comparison for two different scenarios that we already discussed. Uh, both of them, no pure pixel scenario. Uh, this is the difficult uh, scenario that you have only one pixel. So this is a basically two different simulated data set. And uh, you see some comparison of the, some of the techniques that I talked about. I didn't talk about UDAS and the uh, site unit. Uh, we talk later on about collab uh, in a sparse mixing, and this is basically the um, abundance RMC, uh, the overall abundance RMC for, for different uh, signal to noise ratio for two different cases.
This is the result for SAD, um, fully simulated data set, um, only fully simulated data set two. And you also see the visualization that how the, the red and members basically, this is for the case of 240 dB, how the, the red is the basically the, the plan truth and the black is the estimated one. And see how uh, the misses in that the people quotes are uh, closely or uh, following the ground truth and members. And this is basically a result for 20 dB, 30 dB, 40 dB, and 50 dB for the uh, mean set. And this for real uh, data set, uh, which is called Samsung, it's a commonly used uh, data set, uh, widely used data set for our mixing. You have um, uh, three materials, or tree and water, and uh, this is the comparison between different techniques based on abundance RMSC, and this is the, basically the visualization of the estimated abundances with respect to the ground truth. So um, now we're uh, moving to sports on mixing. If you don't have any question, the line on mixing is uh, finished. Um, in case you have a question. Okay, um, it seems that there is no question so far. I hope that everyone is following. And uh, in case if uh, you have a question, you can also uh, later write in chat or ask, uh, or just open your mic and ask. Uh, Yeah, it's for some mixing actually uh, invented uh, by uh, Jose, Jose by um, And uh, so um, when you have, um, when uh, so basically you realize that uh, only a few members can reconstruct the mix hyperspectral pixels. And if you have a properly designed uh, dictionary, like D uh, of uh, your N members, then um, you can uh, uh, basically um, use sparse regression to solve this problem and estimate the abundances. So in a sparse mixing, or that's why uh, something's called semi-supervised, you use a dictionary to estimate your abundances. And you need to um, kind of uh, promote the sparsity on your abundances. So yeah, the, 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 the main advantage of these techniques is that um, you don't need to estimate the number of N members for all the other uh, techniques that we discussed before. Uh, it's a big uh, challenge uh, that uh, what is the optimal number of N members in your data set. Um, so, yeah, this is a, a, one of the main advantage of this technique. So basically, uh, wh why is your um, pixel, uh, pixels that we discussed before, and then you have a dictionary, size P, times m and then your abundances is m times n in this case and then plus the minus. so the first technique we are going to discuss is um, the sparse sum mixing by variable splitting and augmented uh, Lagrangian um, basically uh, in in this uh, technique, which actually called um, short sun cell, um, 
they uh, they uh, they apply L1 to promote uh, sparsity and abundances. And there's also uh, in the same paper, there was another technique called season sol, which is the constraint form uh, of this problem. Um, and then basically they use variable splitting and one Lagrangian to solve this problem. That's why it's called by variable splitting and over the lecture Lagrangian, if you know about this technique. And then later on, they uh, proposed the Sunsalt TV in this paper. So this is a paper for Sunsalt. Um, so the difference is they, they actually keep the as a album penalty, but they drop the uh, abundance sub to one constraint and they use uh, so basically uh, 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 there's a conflict between uh, L1 penalty and abundance sub to one constraint and you can show that L1 penalty is enough to use an abundances um, uh, to promote sub to one constraint and then uh, they use uh, the total variation penalty on abundances, they use a non isotropic uh, TV given by applying uh, uh, L1 on uh, RA, which is uh, RA is this matrix, which is uh, uh, DH is a horizontal difference matrix, uh, and uh, DV is a vertical uh, difference matrix. So that is uh, Sunsol TV, and then they solve this problem. And they also uh, propose collaborative uh, sparse on mixing that we I already discussed, uh, show some result. Um, and in this case, they use a, a, a kind of a group lasso penalty and um, uh, abundances. So it's a kind of uh, L1 and, uh, and L2 on the abundances, and um, which uh, originally proposed in this paper, and later on in this paper, they uh, uh, propose a variation of this, and also they use um, a kind of um, uh, ML bundle extraction to extract the dictionary from the data set itself. So that's uh, actually we are showing the result for this technique, if you see in the table. Um, so that's collaborative sparse on mixing. Okay, and then later on we, um, So recently we proposed Sun CNN, sports and mixing using unsupervised uh, convolution neural network units in this paper. And uh, so the main idea is that as we already discussed, choosing this penalty, a sparsely promoting penalty, it's a, a big topic, not a big topic, but uh, there is a, a big argue, like what type of uh, uh, penalty is suitable to promote the sparsity. Uh, so therefore, uh, you can substitute this with an image prior, and then we showed that uh, using the concept of deep image prior, we can solve this uh, problem or translate this problem to an optimization with respect to the parameter of a deep network, which is F, and this is the network that we used, and uh, for estimating the abundances, so, and then we use the uh, so basically, we are using the uh, uh, CNN network, the skip connection, and uh, we apply softmax uh, layer in the end to to basically hold a abundance non negativity and abundance sum to one constraint. We also work with this. Uh, actually, this is the only uh, sparse on mixing that we work with it today. And the reason is that we try to provide you. Uh, uh, Python uh, based uh, uh, package. So uh, most of the other techniques are uh, uh, in uh, MATLAB. 
So they also work with this method. And this is um, some result for the uh, Sun CNN compared with um, compared with other technique. So we talked about sun sun cell, uh, sun cell TV. Um, yeah, this is special spectral way to display some mixing. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's another response on mixing that we didn't uh, discuss, and these two are actually uh, segmentation based. Uh, you use two different segmentation uh, to uh, apply um, on mixing. These are uh, some uh, methods that we didn't discuss today. So, um, so you what you see is uh, SRE, and. Uh, for 20 dB, 30 dB, 40 dB, and we can compare uh, when we compare the results uh, for one abundance in different uh, signal to noise ratio for a simulated data set. So, um, any questions so far? I think you, by now, you should have some question. You must have some questions. Any question? Okay, um, maybe you come up with some question later. Uh, but uh, so we will finish the major uh, methods and topics. So by now, uh, you need to be able to answer the, the some of the question I already asked in, in the first slide. Uh, what is mixing? What's the linear mixing? What's the difference between linear and non-linear non mixing? And um, then uh, uh, what is geometrical mixing? And the different type of geometrical mixing. So, and then the difference between um, supervised, semi-supervised, and blind mixing. By now, you know the difference and how you should you know how to use. Uh, uh, autoencoder in CNN for um, mixing. So I assume that uh, you're all um, familiar with these concepts now. And for further study, I would suggest um, some references. Uh, yeah, I mentioned in the lecture that the estimation uh, number of uh, the number of N members um, is a uh, big challenge. It's some, uh, it's called subspace identification. So here are some uh, references that you can you can uh, see some methods that uh, they estimate they try to estimate the number of N members. And uh, then about the spectrality and variabilities. Uh, I already suggested these two um, references if you're interested in. And then for nonlinear mixing, it's also a big uh, topic and it's a very difficult uh, topic. If you're interested, you can, I would suggest to uh, read uh, this uh, publication, a, a review on nonlinear hyperspectral on mixing methods. Um, and also recently we developed uh, a nonlinear a blind nonlinear mixing technique for intimate mixtures using uh, HAPTI model and convolutional neural network called HAPTI CNN. Uh, you may also want to have a look at this method that uh, uh, 
the implementation in the code is also available on my GitHub page. And yeah, for comparison of uh, autoencoders for blind arm mixing, I, would, I uh, suggest to read this paper. Uh, uh, it's blind arm hyperspectral arm mixing with the autoencoder critical comparison. So there you can get uh, a sense of uh, comparison different, between different type of autoencoders and different type of uh, uh, parameter selection or um, uh, different uh, uh, criteria for design your architectures and how it affects the final result. So these are uh, some uh, for this to be in this topic. And now before, uh, once again, if you have any question, you can ask. Okay. Okay, so now we move to, uh, okay, before uh, we're gonna have a short break and then um, we're gonna start uh, the, uh, the hands-on session. And then um, basically uh, I would suggest, I mean, you were supposed to um, read uh, these slides and uh, um, the prerequisite for uh, this uh, session. I assume that some of you, at least some of you, they, uh, you did it. And uh, uh, so maybe do, if you, ha uh, you haven't done it, maybe during this break, you can do that. So check out, check out the uh, GitHub repository. And uh, uh, okay, actually, first of all, before we start, I need to thank Alex, uh, who uh, has a major contribution to create this repository with me. And so, my special thanks goes uh, to Alex. And uh, so, you you should. Uh, um, Check the um, GitHub repository uh, during the break if you haven't done it. Uh, if you don't have a GPU, just make sure that you sign up for a Google uh, account and you can work with Google Cloud. So we provided uh, for all these uh, methods that it's there. We provide Collab version so you can run it on uh, Collab. Uh, Google Cloud. Uh, <clears throat> if you have a GPU and you want to use it, then there are some instructions uh, on the GitHub page to install the dependencies. Uh, please go ahead and do that, uh, uh, particularly if you're familiar with this, uh, using this, uh, and if you're good in programming. And uh, yeah, so then uh, we come back and uh, we start the session, the hands-on session. Okay, I uh, there's one question, quick question. Do we have time for lunch break? Yes, so that's that's basically, I, I say it's lunch break now, it's 12. Uh, we can have uh, 15 minutes uh, or 20 minutes for lunch break, is that enough? Uh, or you want to have more time for your lunch break? I think it's enough. We can, we okay. can end in 20 okay. minutes. Yeah, let's say 15 minutes, 20 minutes, that's uh, that's enough for uh, for lunch break. Um, so I'll try to be back here in uh, 15 minutes uh, from now. So let's say, uh, yeah, a few minutes from now. And uh, so when we are back, uh, uh, we start with uh, 
a hands-on uh, tutorial and uh, the hands-on session of the tutorial. And please, uh, during uh, the, this break, if you get time, go over and uh, check out the repository. Okay, if you uh, have no further question, we go for the break and we come back. That's one one thing. Uh, just one more. Can I ask you to uh, open uh, your uh, video to share your video to do a group picture before the break? Uh, say it again. Uh, do you mind? Are you uh, talking to me? Uh, no, to everybody. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, yes. If you can. Uh, can uh, turn on the camera with a group picture. Okay. Uh, and can you unshare the screen? No, the two yep. ah, Thank you. All right, great. Just a few seconds. Yeah, I think uh, everybody can see um, Alexander and Alexander Zoli here. Uh, he is going to help me with uh, with my colleague. He's going to help me with uh, the hands-on session. Just a few seconds more. Thank you so much. Have a nice break. Yeah. See you soon, everyone.
我们要去朝阳。哪个？嗯，我看看。目前是，但但应该就是。先不管。嗯。应该是的。你确定哈？要不你给打个啊，那现在没有。这里有好几百人，那都算了。中国，中国有啥了？这个。哎，我知道，等你呢。啊？那我在这等你。
slides. I hope everyone is back by now from lunch break. I already see some uh, interaction in the chat. <clears throat> Okay, let me uh, share my screen again. Um, <clears throat> so, so you have the uh, GitHub repository. Um, there are some exercises in the slides. You go, uh, there were really some questions also in the chat that, um, uh, if you're going to use all the uh, notebooks, and hopefully we can use all the notebooks, uh, all the uh, methods, uh, at least uh, for one data set and uh, for the setup that we provided for you. Uh, so, so I would suggest you just go ahead and uh, do all the experiments. As you see, there are some tables here for you to uh, use the um, the notebooks and the work pages and to fill out these um, the results here so so I would suggest if you uh, if it, you are not experienced Python programmer, an experienced uh, Python programmer, then just stick to the uh, collab version. And the, there's a collab button on the top of the each uh, method. And uh, just make sure before running, you have to change the you you set the the the, the, the runtime and select the GPU for your run runtime. And then switching between the notebooks, uh, make sure you disconnect and delete uh, runtime. Uh, that's one thing, and uh, there are some instructions for those who want to run the code on their own GPU, or if they if uh, they want to uh, run the codes uh, on a server as well. How they can render uh, the uh, the notebook uh, on their local uh, machine and. Uh, <clears throat> So we start, uh, I want just want to say, because I saw already there are uh, so many um, uh, questions in the chat. Um, I just want to uh, mention that uh, you're 85. And um, if you want to um, um, ask question about uh, setting up, then uh, 85 question is, it takes a lot of time for us to answer one by one, just be patient, but try to uh, um, uh, solve your problem yourself. And if your problem with uh, uh, installing the package on your GPU, uh, just I would suggest you um, to use the uh, collab version for now, because uh, the main uh, point currently is that you work with these unmixing uh, techniques and uh, uh, we can uh, discuss the results and you get the results. And um, then uh, basically, um, uh, then, then later on you can, you can install the, uh, a package on your GPU and uh, use uh, the package uh, I, I, either in a server or in a GPU. Okay, so please go ahead and uh, for the first exercise, what you need to do, you need to uh, 
use um, uh, you need to run these methods is already a question I don't know where should I start should I download the data set and then run the uh, aligners script um, no Khaled uh, uh, try to uh, use the uh, call up button and uh, let me go to the so uh, okay, I, I'll answer you, Khaled. Uh, wait a minute. Um, so for those who want to uh, continue with the exercise, we have uh, two supervised FCLSU, which uses a VCA to extract the uh, end members, and Andy, which uses a uh, uh, similar volume maximization to extract end members, and then we have uh, the other blind unmixing methods that we discussed and. Um, uh, the uh, um, the last three one basically are um, the auto encoder or the planet based one. Um, so what you need to calculate, I think uh, we set up everything for you to witness our MSC for different material uh, and for uh, the, the the notebook is set for Apex data set, which uh, uh, we estimated three or four materials wrote uh, three. Uh, roof and water in that image, and uh, you can feel um, the error, uh, abundance RMSC error for each material independently for different methods, and also the overall uh, uh, abundance RMSC. And do the same uh, with SAD when you're running the method, and that would be the first thing to say. So yeah, answer uh, Alex is answering Khaled, uh, but uh, let me go out of my presentation and uh, maybe um, go directly to my page here. One second. So, um, yeah, let's say I want to run uh, Mrs. Inet. So this is the um, collab version that for those who are not experienced in Python programming, just use this tab. I hope you have uh, um, uh, you were supposed to make a, an account. If you are not, then just do it. And um, so this is basically a technique uh, that we discussed, Mrs. Inet. And you can run um, the whole uh, Oh, make sure that the runtime is GPU for you. And then you can run. So you can run the, the notebook and um, it will automatically install some uh, dependency for you and run the uh, package for Apex dataset. And for in this case, applies um, Mrs. Net for you. So that's all it. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I go up to see. So as you see, I'm running uh, 
uh, MISIS net for um, um, for Apex dataset, and it takes time. You need to wait a little bit. Uh, this is the uh, basically going over the iterations. And when it's done, you are supposed to get um, the results. Okay, I'm going to go up and see. Yeah, I see that uh, there are so many uh, things, but everyone is working with Colab now, which is great. That's why actually we provided the Colab version because it's uh, not easy to help everyone to install the package on uh, their own uh, GPU in such a short time. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, so just uh, let me know if you should be able to uh, you should be able to run the collab version and uh, get the results in maybe a couple of uh, um, um, minutes. It depends on, on the uh, uh, method or second. Ying Chow, you have a question? Yes, it is. It is in the run experiment stage now. Okay, uh, that's great. Thanks, uh, Ahmed. Um, so uh, I would like to ask everyone to confirm if uh, they're working with the notebooks. Cool. Wonderful. So as you see, um, um, my experiment is done and I get the results and uh, I get some uh, RMC value and then I, I get uh, RMC value for independent, uh, for, for uh, specific material as well. You should get similar results, but not the exact results maybe is similar. Uh, uh, keep in mind that randomness involving uh, all this, uh, depending on the method, uh, but the randomness involves in uh, all these results. So, um, uh, particularly for the methods, if you want to compare the result with the one that uh, um, reported in, in the publications, you need to kind of uh, uh, run it for 10 times and uh, average the uh, results and report the mean value. I, I assume everyone is uh, working with uh, everyone is working with the code now, and you should be able to. Uh, I know, no, of course not. I mean. Uh, that was just uh, okay. So one person is asking if if you need to run it ten times. No, 
uh, Ahmed is asking. No, you just uh, run for now for one time. Uh, but uh, um, I, I was just uh, uh, mentioning that because if you want to compare the result with the pub published result in, in the manuscript for all, every of these methods, you need to run it 10 times. But for now, we stick to one time. And uh, the idea is to simply um, uh, be able to get the result for these unmixing techniques and uh, work with them. And later on, we go to uh, some kind of uh, parameter tuning uh, for one specific method. And then after that, for sparse unmix. Yes, but I I told I uh, told you briefly about the data set. It's um, um, let me see if I can actually uh, refer to the page here. Um, where do I have it? So basically, this is this part is water. Uh, let me explain briefly. And um, then we have a road section and uh, some houses that uh, we call it roof and uh, some um, uh, uh, grass. So what you uh, actually, for instance, in this case, you have some estimations of, of the N members and we plot it and then abundances. As you see, for instance, this is the result of uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, this is the end member for water, corresponding to abundance here, number three. And then you have uh, vegetations, for instance, is uh, end member number one, or um, <clears throat> vegetation or grass, and then roof, and then roads. Basically, these are uh, uh, so, so number number two is uh, the estimation of the end member for roof, and then the estimation for uh, roads. So, this is a small uh, upon, uh, this small, very very small portion of the a uh, big data set, hyperspectral data set, and. Uh, um uh, I think it has uh, more than as you see here more than uh, two 250 bands and uh, so there are um I will find the link uh, to to the um, actual uh, uh, to the real latest if you want but we uploaded the uh, a, a, a crop version of it uh, on GitHub. Uh, so that the ground truths and members basically um, uh, they are uh, uh, kind of measured in the field, and that's uh, how we use those uh, uh, measure uh, spectra as the ground truths for the end members. So I will try to. Let me stop sharing. I will try to find uh, the link to the actual uh, the whole data set for you.
so we uh, yes so for us basically this data set that we are sharing here it has a, a 111 times 122 pixels and the actual number of bands is 285 bands and uh, the way that we uh, estimated the ground truth abundances, we used the FCLSU and uh, uh, measured the spectra in the field. Um, and I will put the link to the. Let's see. be able to find the whole data set here. Let's see, this is a publication related to this data set. And this is a link you're interested in. And, uh, yeah. It's an airborne data set. So, let me get back to chat. If you have any question. Yes, I just sent a link for the data set. And for the, and the paper regarding to the outbreaks. You will see that. 
Ah, sorry. I, I put it in the response to some direct message. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, just a second for everyone. Link. Yes. It's a great message to me for some reason. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I think now you have it. Okay, um, any question? Yes, that's correct, Alex, what you wrote. Yeah, it's correct. But in the case of FCL issue that you are experimenting here, you use VCA to extract the end members, but for the ground truth, for the end members, we, we selected, uh, we used the ground truth end members, which actually me measured in the field. So if you, uh, so my question is that if everybody is uh, able to at least run once for all these uh, methods in the table. Okay. Ahmed is running the third method now, and uh, okay, um, Jose Martins. Uh, yeah, that's that's cool. So you you did all the experiments. So just go on. Uh, we'll go for the next uh, next exercise, and I will wait in the. Yeah, basically run the method and uh, uh, all the methods and um, uh, fill out I'll fill out the whole table. Okay. So maybe now it's time for me to ask a question uh, from Jose. Jose, uh, which method outperforms the other method in terms of uh, abundance RMSC? Can you let me know? In terms of abundance RMSC? Yeah, which one? The overall performances. CNN autoencoder. Okay. Uh, are you talking about abundance RMSC or um, spectral angle distance? Yeah, well, the highest it means it means that uh, we are, okay. I forgot to say that uh, uh, you need to. Uh, the best performance uh, for uh, 
abundance, uh, RMSC is uh, the one that has the minimum. So the, the, uh, for, for all the metrics that, uh, no, for two of the metrics, for SAD and uh, for RMC, the lowest value would be uh, a better criteria, but for, for SRE, the highest value will, uh, will be the criteria, the best uh, performance. So anyone else? This is net. Okay. <clears throat> but you only have uh, four methods. So I assume you did not. You only apply for, uh, you're only talking about the line of mixing. Uh, I think what Jose has is uh, the different materials performance. And what you want to report is the cell that's above it, where you have the overall performance. Okay. Um, there is a question ETA autoencoder. Uh, by Jun Junjan Yoshi. I'm not sure what you're asking. Ah, the the the, the, the pace performance. Yeah, probably. You must be right. So we are running out of time. Uh, <clears throat> I yeah. So I hope that um, all of you at least run once all the methods that we provided. Uh, it seems that everybody is working and there is no. Uh, Main questions here, main question here. <clears throat> so maybe we can go to next exercises and uh, I will explain now. Um, let me share again. So, um, in the next exercises, we uh, we stick to uh, this net, and we try to find uh, we try to um, uh, no sorry in 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 exercise two two number two we want to um, change the initialization of the end member the end member initialization for FCLSU and compare the results. So if you if the <clears throat> if you have the code, uh, if you open the notebook, uh, uh, there are some options how to uh, change the, the it's it's written how to change the initialization for true and number random pixels and VCA. So the result so far was based on VCA, so you don't have to run it again. Uh, uh, so you can just. Uh, uh, keep the results of uh, previous experiments for which was based on VCA, 
And now uh, uh, you need to run in the uh, notebook twice for true end member and also random end member. <clears throat> and then basically uh, you can fill out uh, this table and <clears throat> compare the um, abundance RM, overall abundance RMC and SAD for different initialization. And you see that perhaps <clears throat> uh, we see uh, initialization should work much better. Obviously, the N2 and member works better, but then you see that the, the difference between random pixel initialization and, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and initialization with uh, we see. It. Okay, I see some question that Alex is uh, answering. Uh, I will quickly go over them soon after I'm done with explaining the exercises. So if you're done with number two and then uh, open the notebook for uh, Mrs. Sinet. And uh, I provided a couple of uh, exercises here for you to see the difference uh, uh, between the um, different value of uh, hyperparameters of the network and see how it affects the final results uh, based on uh, abundance RMC and uh, mean set. So uh, the first one, uh, when you open MCC net, uh, you uh, uh, can compare the different results of uh, learning rates for the network. Um, there's a comment in the notebook and uh, you can change uh, the, the results for uh, different ratio. You already have the learning rate for uh, 0 point, uh, uh, point 0.001. So it was the, from the previous experiments and then you can get a, a result for uh, change the learning values and get the results and compare the results and uh, see uh, which learning uh, rate uh, is better for this network. After that, what you can do, you can change the lambda uh, uh, parameter, which was the, uh, related to uh, um, minimum volume uh, constraint. If you remember, um, so in these experiments, uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to uh, compare the uh, the result of uh, the, the the effect of different value of uh, lambda on the final results. So you can change uh, to one, uh, ten, and one hundred, which you already used once. So in all these table, uh, just keep in mind that uh, uh, one of the column you already experimented. You need to. You don't have to uh, redo it again. And therefore, when you complete this result, you see that, uh, for instance, which lambda is uh, uh, works better for um, the, these uh, data set that we are working with. We do the same. Uh, you can do the same with uh, number of filters and change the number of filters. There's a comment that where we can change NF to 64, 128. It was already 256. So you don't have to redo it again, just write down what you have already. And also uh, for, um, you can change the number of iteration. Number of iteration is also, uh, in this case, a uh, hyperparameter of the network. Um, so I suggest you, you already have the result for 8,000. So I just suggest you to see the result for 4,000 and 6,000. If you do all these experiments, I, I uh, try to answer your uh, question in the chat, then we can move on to uh, uh, exercises for uh, sparse and mixing and sun CNN. And by the way, we are not going to have any uh, other break 
uh, we just uh, continue in um, until we are done with the experiments. And if you're tired, you, you can just take a break yourself, and uh, it's up to you. Or you can, uh, if you're done, basically uh, with the experiments you, yourself, it's also good. So let me see. Yeah, um, there's some explanation if you're uh, interested how to change the uh, Alex is explaining that uh, the line that you are supposed to change for um, uh, the initialization of the end member in FCLSU. So maybe I can show you because I think I have the notebook open here for um, Mrs. Inet. I think it's going to be good if I show you how to change the hyperparameter. Uh, Alex already explained how to change the um, initialization of the end member. Um, let me share my screen again. So, yeah, you see here, um, basically, um, uh, you can change the learning rate or you can, uh, um, change the lambda value here you can change the uh, number of filters here and uh, number of iterations so this should provide you uh, all the information that you need to for the parameter tuning and if you have any Yeah, um, so it seems that everyone is uh, following and work, working with the network, uh, with the notebooks, um, which is good, which is good. And uh, for those that uh, who are uh, uh, a little bit experienced uh, or more experienced uh, with Python programming, you can be provided other data sets called Samsung and Yasper in the notebook. And uh, you can apply these techniques if you're interested for other data sets as well. If you have, uh, if you follow, if you, when you finish the experiments uh, and uh, you want to do more experiments, try to change the data set and use the data set to other data set like Samsung and Yasper. But uh, just make sure that you change the uh, the number of n members. So the number of n members uh, should be according to the data set. For instance, uh, here in uh, 
in Mrs. Senate, the number of N members is four. Okay, so yeah, basically it's uh, our max. So in case if you're uh, selecting the number of M members, just make sure that it's correct. Yeah, actually, Benud, uh, regarding this, if you want to change the data set, you need to change the before the last cell. And instead of having uh, the or the last cell, actually, the last cell. Yeah. Yeah. Here you can uh, uncomment the, the yes. first line and it will yes. work yes. as intended. Yeah, obviously, obviously, this is only for this label is only for um, uh, this label is only for uh, Apex data set. Yeah, and uh, obviously, you get different. Uh, you you need to uh, provide different labels if you want to have it labeled or all the results. Uh, one thing that actually I didn't discuss and is very important is uh, uh, it's a matching uh, issue that uh, for uh, okay you don't have this problem now because we did it already for you uh, but uh, when you apply an unmixing uh, the line unmixing technique and you want to compare it with the ground truth basically. Um, uh, you uh, you need to uh, can you match with your grand truth so you really uh, don't have the same order in your uh, matrix uh, so the book bookkeeping it's different order and it might even change with different runs and uh, so what we need to do we need to apply uh, a kind of uh, matching which you require a liner and uh, this can be uh, in terms of N members and in the literature often it's, uh, it is in terms of N member alignment. So basically you uh, uh, align the different N member, uh, you, you, you find the best match uh, to your uh, uh, ground truth. And then according to that, you, uh, you uh, compare the abundances as well. So this is very important for you. And uh, in, uh, in case you want to compare it with ground truth, okay? So do you need to do this uh, matching and we'll, we call it a liner here, actually. So, and always uh, this, um, this is not perfect all the time. So uh, you want to uh, make sure and compare it visually and make sure that you are uh, com when you're computing the RMSC, you're computing the right abundances together. So uh, yeah, and I think so. As you see, right before we we use this uh, aligner uh, right before uh, computing the RMSC and set. Okay, um, so you go to check all the questions. So you can you can open your mic if you want to ask a question or do don't be shy. Yes, the other data set is other all over spectral. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a question that uh, how does this uh, work with uh, MS data, which I assume that you're talking about uh, multi spectral data, basically. Um, 
So this is the main advantage of the hyperaspect are to, uh, uh, to uh, extract these end members and abundances. You can apply this method for uh, uh, multispectral as well, but uh, uh, because you don't have a fine uh, um, spectral signature, um, uh, therefore you don't you might not get as uh, good as good as good result uh, as uh, uh, the one that you can get with uh, hyperspectral. So that's why it's called spectral on mixing. But uh, for like, uh, but still for multi-spectra that had, uh, for instance, maybe Sentinel-2 uh, that has um, um, a little bit more bands, you might get uh, some decent results for some um, specific uh, uh, application. So that was a question by TK. So, do you mind? Um, can, are you here? Uh, yeah, can, can you hear me? uh yeah yes okay terrific uh, so yeah good morning uh, my name is jason uh as a quick question regarding the data i looked yeah. at the, the the apex data set and it looked like it was a you know a data cube that you open an nv uh hdr file or something like that uh, do we with this uh spectral mixing non mixing stuff do you is the data have other forms? I mean, do you deal with TIFF files or, you know, like geo TIFFs or things like that, or have large repositories where you have to import TIFF data and stuff like that? Or is it typically a more of like a, a bespoke data you're format like MV? You, you're talking about the original data you want to open? Yes, and just in general, because I, I, yes, I was, I was looking at the APEX oh, yeah, data. Yeah, the data, the data might come in in different type, type of for, formats and different type of saving hyperspectral data or any type of other data. So, uh, yeah, I, I cannot remember what, what was the original format for this data. Uh, but I didn't understand what was your question. Do you want to open it and you want to know which? Well, uh, sure, sure. I guess my, my question was more of a, in your experience, what, what kind of data formats you typically have to deal with? Because, you know, the, the pre-processing steps, uh, cumbersome one, especially for the geospatial remote sensing field. And so I was... I was interested to you get your perspective on the, the various yeah, data yeah, formats. Like, uh, what what type of format would be uh, useful to uh, uh, basically uh, keep the data, the measured data? Is that what you're asking? So as a practitioner in the field, because I mean, I, I do geospatial remote sensing type stuff, but not the hyperspectral with you know hundreds of bands and stuff like that. So I was wondering if that brought. Uh, New challenges or whatnot, as opposed to like a, a one to three band image requirement. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, it depends. It depends uh, um, uh, if if uh, if you want, you can use some kind of uh, compression tool if you're dealing with really um, um, high amount of volume. Otherwise, I would say similar to other other data sets. Uh, there are some uh, some techniques to compress the data, uh, but other than that, uh, any uh, any uh, I would say that uh, uh, it, there's no difference between like multi spectral and high spectral uh, in that sense. Uh, Raise one. Do you have any questions as well? Yeah, Jason. Please. Well, so I guess as a final follow-up, then, then I'll stop uh, with this line. But do you, do you and your uh, peers, do you use MV and stuff a lot, or, or, or uh, no? basically uh, uh, in our lab, if you were talking about like, uh, so uh, let me 
because when you say you, it's it's a little bit different. Uh, um, in our lab, yes, uh, where we have uh, several sensors, and then uh, uh, in the lab that uh, I work, and uh, we use this kind of uh, softwares to save and open the data sets. But uh, um, but these these things, uh, it's basically um, uh, we are working uh, for uh, the data set that we use to develop techniques are basically uh, uh, some open source data sets. And uh, uh, for instance, this particular data set that we are, we are just saving in, in MAT file. And uh, we also share this MAT files and we, we mainly use this for uh, developing uh, techniques and uh, uh, unmixing techniques. So, I see. Thank you. So, um, get back to the chat and see, but we don't have, uh, uh, I don't know, Jimane, uh, Jimane, Jimane, are you here? Can I ask you if, yeah. uh, uh, how, how much time do we have? Because you said that you need uh, 10, 15 minutes to close the session. Uh, yeah, you have half an hour. Half an hour, okay, thanks. That's different. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, let me go to continue. Uh, so, any any question, uh, any problem with running these codes? And uh, uh, doing these experiments so far. Is there anybody who uh, did not run or couldn't manage to run uh, the notebooks? Now it's time to let us know if there is any. Okay. I'm going to move on to the uh, final exercise. Yeah, uh, I think we already answered this question who. So if you go a little bit above uh, in the chat, you will see the answer. Uh, okay. So now it's time for um, uh, the sparse and mixing, run the experiments for the sparse and mixing if you're done with the previous exercises. Uh, good for you. If you don't, then maybe uh, you want to leave it for later because now you uh, have all the tools to run them and uh, complete the exercises later on. So now you need to go to Sun CNN and uh, uh, try to uh, complete the a table below. Uh, uh, for for 20 dB, so here in this case we add uh, noise to the data set and uh, you can uh, change the parameter for the noise later on and compute for 
uh, signal to noise ratio 30 dB and 40 dB as well. And uh, so first, uh, so there, there are two different uh, data queues simulated. These are simulated data queues, okay? And uh, for the simulated data cube, you can use uh, 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 for the uh, data cube one. You can just use the um, just just run the notebook that we provided. And for DC two, you change the setup as we explained, and uh, uh, then uh, you can run. Uh, uh, or if you get time, you can run, run the code for different signal to noise ratio. And um, then you can do it for both data sets, but that takes a long time. So just do it if you uh, are done with other experiments. Um, you can again change the other uh, the, the parameters of the network, as I said, and compare the results. Uh, just see uh, if you can do uh, fine tuning, for instance, as far as remember, we fix the number of iteration and the number of iteration is not optimal. Uh, so if you change the number of iteration, uh, most probably you can get even better result in some cases. Uh, <clears throat> And then, uh, yeah, uh, well, what you can do uh, if you if you set the plot flag to true, you can see how abundances are changing over the time. With the, it takes a little bit more time uh, to plot uh, abundances in each uh, iteration, but that uh, there you can see how it's changing. Uh, to respect to the um, ground truth, uh, and you just you what you're plotting there is just a color image of uh, three abundances. And uh, yeah, you can plot all the abundances compared with the uh, ground truth if you want. Uh, for those who are a little bit more, uh, these are uh, experiments for those who are more. Uh, experiences uh, experiments for those who are experienced with program uh, Python programming okay and uh, the last thing that you can do uh, you can come out uh, this line in the in the code and uh, that plots uh, um, the value of the abundances and uh, it would be interesting for you to see how these uh, uh, basically sparse on mixing uh, promote uh, sparsity and your abundances. And uh, this is uh, what we discussed in the um, uh, lecture. Yeah, that's all for now. And uh, you can change the value told. Uh, two to 10 if you want to later on in case if you want to run um, the codes for 10 times and then get the average uh, of the results. But obviously you need to save results in the integration. So I go back to chat to help Alex. <clears throat> okay um so let me know if uh, anybody is uh, able to run uh, on CNN and uh, 
see the results. We have roughly uh, 20 minutes left. So if you have any question, if you, have, uh, if you need any help right now, it's time to ask. So I assume that uh, all of you are uh, able to uh, run the notebooks, OK? So again, uh, the result for some CNN based on two uh, simulated data set. If you're uh, interested in a real data set on, on the original uh, uh, repository for Sun CNN, you can get, uh, uh, sorry, uh, not in Sun CNN, uh, but uh, I think uh, it's available online. Uh, for instance, Cooper data set is a data set that you can use or any other data set to um, uh, compare the to apply sparse and mixing and probably some CNN for for real latest. Okay. So, um, I saw that there is a problem. There was a problem with the uh, random. Um, no, it uh, through a memory initialization for FCLSU. Um, if you cannot get the answer, just uh, move on. Um, Yeah. Okay, I would suggest uh, instead of changing the data set, uh, uh, go and work with Sansian and uh, just make sure that you can also run uh, at least one sports on mixing um, technique and uh, get some results, and then uh, we have time to uh, basically work with the other data set later on.
So anybody, uh, can you let me know in the chat that uh, anybody is working with Sun CNN, uh, Sparsa Mixing? Okay, cool. So yeah, you you are getting uh, the result for uh, uh, Larabi. Uh, you're getting result for um, um, yeah, mean absolute um, error and the uh, SRE SRE that you that you that you are interested in, and um, so so. The difference, just to let you know, the difference between the uh, SRE and SRE average is uh, uh, is the one that uh, uh, SRE is the last uh, um, result for the last uh, iteration, and SRE, SRE average is the one that uh, it's um, it, when you apply a kind of exponential averaging over uh, the results of the iterations. Cool. So. Uh, Ali got the same result as well. Start Ali. Same for Bruno. So that's good that you're also working with uh, at least one sport on mixing technique. It's on the same. Cool. Yeah, we see that uh, you're getting different uh, results, uh, JSON. So maybe you want to run it again and uh, see the SRE is changing. So as you see, SRE uh, randomness involved and uh, for getting uh, um, reporting this result, we need to run it at least 10 times to take, uh, and take the average. Um, so while uh, it seems that everybody, uh, yes, one question from uh, Ali that uh, can data for something be replaced with uh, real uh, hyperspectral data. Yes, you can do that. Uh, there is only uh, one uh, thing that you need to consider. So we we are using a dictionary, okay? So this dictionary that we are using in this. Uh, uh, method for this uh, simulated data set, it works uh, based on my experiments for corporate data set as well, which is why they use data set for our mixing uh, uh, when they want to show uh, real world experiments. Uh, but uh, for different data sets, you might need uh, to either prune the dictionary or um, add some extra uh, end member libraries to your dictionary. So this is very important uh, to how you design your dictionary when it comes to sparse and mixing. Uh, I hope this answers your questions, Ali, Sally.
Okay. Um, so now that we are um, getting close to the end of this section, this uh, lecture, I will share one last time. Uh, see my slides and before that I'm gonna answer uh, as I could understand uh, so Ali says uh, as I could understand the dictionary for n members must be modified yes so you need to have a proper uh, design of a dictionary when you want to use dictionary uh, for uh, one particular data set um, so um, not uh, one dictionary cannot work for all type of data sets. So it's a little bit uh, tricky in that sense. There are techniques that extract, uh, as I told you, like uh, as I explained in the lecture, uh, like uh, Colab, for instance, was one version of uh, Colab. Uh, uh, that uh, they extract this dictionary from uh, the data itself. Uh, but for some CNN, you need to uh, use, uh, you need to provide a dictionary, a dictionary of N members. So, yeah, let me, um, here we go. Uh, let me before, uh, while uh, you're working with some CNN, I would like to thank uh, Alexander uh, Zwabi, who helped me a lot. Uh, particularly for the hands-on session. And uh, my colleagues and collaborators, Bikram uh, uh, Rala, uh, Paul Schunders, and Julian Myro, uh, and uh, Jocelyn Chanusot. And uh, yeah, the organization basically that uh, supported uh, uh, my research <laughs> throughout the throughout the, uh, uh, sorry, because of the noise, I think when uh, mic was open all of a sudden, um, throughout this, uh, throughout the, uh, basically it's, uh, past years. So um, Alexander von Humboldt's um, uh, Helmholtz centers, uh, centers for tourists in uh, Rosendorf and for Freiburg. And thanks to um, IADF, um, uh, for um, ADF uh, and Indonesian as in data fusion community for um, basically um, uh, providing me uh, this chance to have this uh, tutorial and Gypsum Lab and Real and Vision Lab is all uh, very involved in uh, this talk and lecture and. Uh, so um, I'm not sure if, let me see if I have, uh, there is one more, okay, nothing. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Gmine, is there possible to uh, uh, Gmine? Is it possible to draw a kind of poll? Uh, to understand, I don't know if you do it in the end yourself or not to uh, um, understand basically if uh, the tutorial, <clears throat> uh, maybe I can just ask like this, that uh, if uh, the participant thinks that uh, it was balanced in terms of technical aspects and uh, uh, theoretical aspects and hands-on session and uh, basically the Okay, uh, are you talking about the feedback from the audience, yeah. Brazil? Yeah. Okay, no, we didn't think about this, but uh, if you want, you can do Yeah, that would be great by yourself. If, if you can at the end, maybe at the end of the, um, um, uh, the, the, the whole week, or maybe now, um, I don't know, uh, if it would be great if we can uh, kind of... Uh, 
uh, ask yeah. feedback from the participants. So that would yeah, be yeah. If you helpful. like, you can. If you like, you can bring me some questions that I can put, yeah. and I will sure. email the participants, yeah. and sure. hopefully they will. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, give us because, a reply and a feedback about the yeah, th particular thank you very much. questions. Yeah, you thank are you. welcome. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, in that sense, I can uh, kind of evaluate for the next tutorial if uh, uh, if the if the material were balanced or if the, the participant are interested in more details. Uh, uh, for uh, the lectures or uh, maybe uh, some uh, more time uh, for uh, hands-on session or the, if, the, if everything was balanced. So that would be nice to get kind of feedback. Then. Okay, okay um, so we're getting close uh, to the end of this session. I would like to thank you uh, thank everybody to participate, and I hope that when you go back to the first slide now, um, uh, you can answer some question that I I, I have there, and uh, that would be kind of the main objective for my talk. Um, and you now you are able to um, run different uh, codes and uh, um, do some kind of uh, parameter tuning. Uh, for network and hopefully you can um, uh, in the future you can come up with either uh, 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 kind of auto encoder based arch architecture or kind of um, um, machine learning based or optimization based uh, technique for arm mixing and uh, this would be your final uh, chance if you want uh, to ask any question regarding the lecture or regarding the um, the codes and uh, uh, anything, so you can write it in the chat or you can open your mic and uh, directly ask your question. Okay, seems there is no other question, but I also thank you in, yeah. the, in the chat. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. I also need to thank again um, Alex to help me with answering the questions and preparing the uh, uh hands-on session so i hope that, uh, that the package would be useful as well for uh, uh for the community so thanks again uh, uh Jimena for, for uh inviting me for these lectures and uh yeah that's it thank you um, to you uh, to participate in this kind of initiative and for these uh, very understanding talk and uh, lessons about the theoretical part and about the hands-on part. And thank you, Alex, for uh, this support to this kind of lesson. I really appreciate this kind of lesson. Not so easy to do a four-hour lesson with a theoretical part and a, and then a practical part. Not easy at all. And uh, you did it in the proper way. And uh, with the high breaks, uh, giving breaks, uh, and trying to interact with participants uh, with uh, this huge class, and uh, not not easy at all. So you, know, you did a great job together with Alex. So thank you so much to both of you. And uh, I appreciate it a lot, and I think even the audience appreciated a lot your uh, work with this. Uh, even with these messages in the, in the chat. So uh, with this word, we close the first lesson about uh, the one of the application of computer vision in our research uh, field, in our remote sensing research field, in particular related to spectral mixing.
So uh, we can have up a 15 minutes break um, and we can switch from this lesson to the next one related to change detection with the Dr. Robinson. So see you in uh, 15 minutes. So two and um, uh, at uh, 2 p.m. radically almost 2 p.m. Two and five minutes more. And that's all from, uh, from my side. So see you later for uh, the next lesson about change detection. Thank you so much. To See you, everyone. You. See you, everyone. And thank right. you so much to the world audience. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks.